So now can you believe it? When he was just in second grade, for where he used to live in USA. So around that, there were, you know, 25 different species of butterflies. You know, monarch butterfly, monarch one, monarch two. He had collected all the different species of butterflies. Hello everyone, this is your English faculty Divya Chandwani and I welcome all of you in today's session where we are going to complete one lecture in one shot. Okay, so yes, you heard me absolutely right. That is in one lecture, we will cover one entire chapter. So I welcome all the dear students in our fast track series where we are going to complete one chapter in one lecture. So let's get started with our today's lecture that is the making of a scientist. So the making of a scientist is all about a very inspiring personality whose name is Richard E. Bright. So he was a very inspiring person and you can learn a lot about, you know, how science works, how he did so, you know, how he did some fantastic work in the field of science. So if you want some inspiration, you can definitely get it from Richard E. Bright. Okay. So now let's get started with our chapter directly. Okay. So students, do you know when he was just 22, he excited the scientific world with a new theory on how do cells work. So that was the theory that, you know, he was working on. Then Richard H. E. Bright and his college roommate, they explained, this is again a very important thing. They explained the theory in an article in the proceedings of the National Academy of Science. So Richard E. Bright along with his roommate, they both were working on a theory and they published an article in the proceedings of the National Academy of Science. Next, it was the first time this important scientific journal had ever published the work of college students. So now it was a very renowned scientific journal and they used to publish work of some very famous and very experienced scientists. But this was the first time when the journal published work of college students. So that itself was a very big achievement for Richard E. Bright and his roommate. Okay. So now next is in sports, that would be like making the big leagues at the age of 15 and hitting a home run your first time at bat. So for, you know, a sports person, it's a very big thing. You must have seen or maybe you have heard about, you know, Yuvraj Singh that how did he hit, uh, you know, six runs on each and every ball on a sing in a single over. So that was a very big achievement for any cricketer. So similarly, if you talk about Richard E. Bright, it was like, you know, making the big leagues only at the age of 15. And it was like hitting a home run, you know, your first time at your bat. So it was like, you know, hitting home run. It was like a very big successful thing for him because he achieved such a big thing that, you know, a person who was just in college, his work was published in such a, you know, famous and important scientific journal. So of course, it was a very big thing. Now next was, uh, yes, as you can see on the screen itself, we have, a, you know, colorful butterfly. So what's the logic behind it? Let's have a look. So yes, that was his, uh, you can say, hobby. It was Richard E. Bright's hobby to collect butterflies. So let's learn about it in detail. Okay. So for Richard E. Bright, it was the first in a long string of achievements in science and other fields. Okay. And it all started with butterflies. So I'll tell you in detail that when he was a kid, when he was just in school, how he, you know, got this hobby of collecting butterflies and how he used to collect coins also, okay? As only child, E. Bright grew up north of Reading, Pennsylvania. There wasn't, this is a place in United States of America when, where he grew up. So there wasn't much I could do there, he said. So, you know, he didn't have much friends in USA, in United States of America. He didn't have anybody to talk to apart from, you know, his mother. So he was usually somebody who was living alone. So I certainly couldn't play football or basketball with a team of one. And, you know, you can say being an introvert, he was not, you know, comfortable or he was not somebody who was, you know, easily friendly with each and everyone. He used to take his own time. So he said, I certainly couldn't play 
football or baseball with a team or you know uh, any of my friends because I was not interested in playing it and I didn't have you know many friends over there so then what happened but there was one thing I could do that was I used to collect things what he used to do he used to collect things okay then he did that and he did it ever he just kept on doing it doing it and that was his hobby of collecting things beginning in kindergarten e bright collected butterflies with the same determination that has marked all his activity so what did richard e bright you know what did he do he collected butterflies with the same determination that has marked all his activities so even when he used to collect butterflies okay students yes it was just a mere hobby but he used to do it with so much discipline and dedication that you know he used to mark the butterflies and this is how it started that he was so passionate about science and he was so passionate about research so even if it's your hobby but if you're very disciplined and if you're very dedicated towards something even out of your hobby you can do something extremely great so he is the perfect example of that now let's move to the next slide and let's have a look so what did he do he started first with collecting rocks he used to collect rocks fossils and even he used to collect coins when he was just a kid and then he became an eager astronomer too sometimes he used to stargaze all night sometimes you know he used to gaze the stars with his telescope okay but it all started with his hobby of collecting first rocks then fossils coins and then he moved to collecting butterflies okay so from the first he had a driving curiosity along with a bright mind so of course you know he became a very famous and a very renowned scientist so the first thing that he had was he had a very curious mind who wanted to know why this thing happens how it works why it is happening when it will happen okay or when did it happen in the past so he wanted to observe all those things so uh, yes he was a very curious child okay along with a very bright mind he also had a mother who encouraged his interest in learning he didn't have his father he passed away but his mother was somebody who was very very supportive you know when it even comes to you know collecting things she was a very very supportive mother she always used to encourage you know richard because he wanted to learn something new and his mother always used to support him that yes you should uh, go ahead my child and you should learn different new things she took him on trips, bought him telescope, microscopes, cameras, mounting materials and other equipments which helped him in many other ways. So she was not only supportive in terms of words but she also used to bring telescopes, she also used to bring microscopes, cameras and other material which was really required for him to you know become a curious person and which was definitely you know helping Richard Ebright Ebright to you know sharpen his mind so what she used to do she used to bring these telescopes and all only when he was a child okay even when he was a child so when he got all these things of course he started stargazing he had microscopes so the interest developed because of his mother because she used to encourage him so much next i was his only companion until he started school so before he went to school he literally didn't have anybody to speak to so you know his mother was his only companion only person you know to whom he could talk so yes his mother said that after that i would bring home friends for him and because you know he had only me as his companion that was his mother so you know what she used to do she used to bring some some of his friends some of his classmates to you know his house so that you know he would have you know different people to talk to so but at night we just did, did things together richie was my whole life after his father died when richie was just in third grade so when richard e bright was in third grade his father passed away and you know that's why his mother said that Richard and you know she used to call him Richie so Richie was the only person who was you know 
who to whom I can talk to and he was my entire world. Who said it? Richard E. Bright's mother said about his uh, her son that was Richard that he was my whole world. I didn't have anybody apart from him. So uh, Richie was my whole life after his father passed away. So she and her son they spent almost every evening evening at the dining room table. They used to sit together in the evening at the dining room table. And if he didn't have things to do, and if Richard E. Bright was idle, if he didn't have anything to do, I found work for him, not physical work, but it was not related to, you know, always physical things, but I always used to give him something or the other. Sometimes it was mental work, so I used to insist on learning things, okay? And he used to like it a lot that even if I'm free, my mother is giving me something new to learn. He was always a curious child. He wanted to learn new things. And when his mother used to, you know, uh, inspire him, motivate him. So he used to enjoy that a lot. So now next, let's move ahead. Okay, now what happened after that? So yes, this is a table that we have. Okay, about how he started, what did, what did he observe, what did he do? So yes, we will learn about this later. But first, let's have a look. So he would learn all of it and he was very, you know, eager to learn. He earned top grades in school because, you know, even when he was free, his mother never used to give him physical work, okay? She used to always, you know, give him something to learn that was new and interesting. So he used to enjoy it and he, you know, topped his school also. And on everyday things, he was just like every other kid. He was just like every, you know, other random kid you know, who would enjoy, who would learn new things, you know, who would be very, you know, nice to his mother. So he was just like any other kid. But by the time he was in the second grade, E. Bright had collected all 25 species of butterflies found around his hometown. So now can you believe it? When he was just in second grade, for where he used to live in USA. So around that, there were, you know, 25 different species of butterflies. So when he was in second grade, by that time, he had collected all the different species of butterflies, okay? And that probably would have been the end of my butterfly collecting, he said. And that is where he stopped after collecting all the 25 different species which were found near his hometown. Okay, but then my mother got me a children's book called The Travels of Monarch X. Okay, and my mother gifted me a new book and the name of the book was The Travels of Monarch X. Okay, so this was a very interesting book which was gifted by his mother to Richard E. Bright. So what did he observe? Species and subspecies of butterflies collected in six weeks in reading what did he observed okay so so this was his observation white m hair streak acadian hair streak bronze copper bog copper purplish copper eastern tailed blue melissa blue silvery blue and snout butterfly okay so these are different categories of butterflies which he uh, collected so one was eyed brown, one was wood nymph, then he collected monarchs, okay. They were also known as monarch or milkweed. Then he collected whites and sulphurs, okay. And the name was Olympia, cloudless sulphur, European cabbage, okay. Then he collected brush-footed butterflies, okay. Verigerated fritillary, Harris checker spot, pearl crescent, morning clock, cloak, painted lady, buck eye, viceroy, white admiral, red spouted, red spotted purple and hackberry. So these were some very different names of the butterflies. Okay. So this is a whole table about the uh, names of butterflies which he uh, collected. These are all different species of butterflies that he collected. But why is hobby turned out, uh, you know, in such a good thing why it turned out to be you know such a such a nice opening for him so let's have a look and understand that what he used to do with those butterflies okay 
so that book the book's name was the monarch of x okay this is on the previous slide if you can see i'll take you back the travels of monarch x okay so that was the name of the book the travels of monarch x so it told him how monarch butterflies migrate to central america and it opened the world of science to the eager young collector he was just a young child he was not aware about butterflies much he was just passionate and very uh, you know he was very interested in collecting things so he started collecting butterflies but that book you know it literally uh, you know told him how monarch butterflies which is again a species of butterflies how do they migrate to central america so you know this young child who didn't have any idea about all these things now he was eager to learn new things okay so now at the end of the book the readers were invited to help study butterfly migrations so now when he completed the book when he was about to end the book all the readers who read that book they were invited okay they were invited to a place where they would you know help those readers to study about how do these butterflies they migrate okay so isn't it interesting so they were asked what they were asked to do they were asked to tag butterflies for research by dr frederick so dr frederick he gave all the readers a task that if you have collected these butterflies you have to tag them okay you have to put a tag on the butterflies you have to at least name the butterflies that this is you know monarch butterfly monarch 1 monarch 2 or whatever the name of the butterfly or the name of the species was so that so then you'll be able to differentiate you know between all those butterflies amongst all the butterflies so dr frederick uh, you know of university of toronto canada he asked all the readers to tag the butterflies and so did richard e bright he completed it okay so yes students now let's move to the next slide and let's have a look ahead okay so e bright's mother what she what did she do she wrote a letter she wrote to dr frederick urguhat and soon e bright was attaching light adhesive tags to the wings of monarchs he was not just putting a normal tag on it what did he do he was attaching light adhesive tags okay it had some light emitting diode it has you know small light adhesive thing on it and he was attaching those tags on the monarch butterflies and he was only supposed to add a small tag it was not supposed to be you know with light and everything but he did that you know he was such a brilliant child and of course with a brilliant mind so anyone who would found a tagged butterfly was asked to send the tag to dr frederick dr urguhat okay and then the butterfly collecting season around reading it lasted for almost around 6 weeks in late summer so this thing it went on for 6 weeks where they were supposed to collect the butterflies and they were supposed to put tag on it okay because it was told to them at the end of the a novel when it when they read the novel so readers were asked to do that so number and kinds of butterfly which was collected in 6 weeks okay so it's again a species gossamer winged so how many were collected eight were collected then wood nymphs and satyrs okay they were only two in number okay bush fluttered okay that was 10 in number which which is a big number whites and sulfurs they were again only 3 in number monarch was only one and snout was again only one so this was the number and uh, these are the names of the butterflies the species so in 6 weeks uh, this is the chart that we have how many butterflies were collected and that two of which species so if you are going to chase them one by one you won't catch very many so the next step to e bright was to raise a flock of butterflies so one thing that he understood was that if you will go and run after them you won't be able to catch many butterflies so what he wanted to do he wanted to raise a flock of butterflies that means he had a small butterfly he wanted to take care of them he wanted to provide them air food you know proper sunlight so that you know he can raise a lot of butterflies okay because if he'll go after you know 
each each and every butterfly he won't be able to have many butterflies so his idea was to raise a flock of butterflies he would catch a female monarch now what he used to do was for that he used to catch a female monarch okay then female monarch then he used to take her eggs when she used to lay the eggs of course the female monarch when she will lay the eggs then he used to raise them in his basement now if not if you know the eggs are not proper properly taken care of you know they won't be able to survive so he used to take proper care of them okay so female monarch she used to lay the eggs and then richard e bride used to raise them raise the eggs raise the you know children of butterfly in his basement and what is the circle what is the circle that they follow okay so what used to happen was this is their life cycle okay i'll show you so the life cycle was from egg to caterpillar okay so first when they were into an egg they were you know when they were raised they used to turn into a caterpillar okay so from egg to caterpillar and then pupa to adult butterfly okay so first it was uh, you know an egg okay and from egg to it was converted into a caterpillar how it was converted into a caterpillar because of course you know when you are raising them this is how they grow from egg to caterpillar then caterpillar to pupa and then into an adult butterfly that you see in your beautiful you know parks and around the beautiful butterflies around flowers so then he would pack the butterflies wings and he would let them go it was not the case that you know he would make the butterflies die in the basement no not at all he used to take care of the eggs okay then eggs used to turn into caterpillars then into pupa and then into adult butterfly so he used to take the female monarchs they used to lay eggs he used to raise them they used to convert into caterpillar from caterpillar to pupa and then into adult butterfly okay so this was the sequence and then he would let the butterflies go okay by tagging the butterflies wings okay for several years his basement was home to thousands of monarchs in different stages of development so for a lot of years his house basement his home's basement was a home to a lot of butterflies to a thousands of butterflies you know and they would have different tags on their wings because they were in different uh, developing stage so a lot of monarch butterflies but in their different development uh, you know developmental stages okay so yes now let's move ahead and let's learn more about it eventually i began to lose interest now if you are doing something on the daily basis of course anybody could you know lose interest easily and same thing happened with whom same thing happened with richard e bright so he was very you know uh, tired and he was losing interest in tagging those butterflies because it was very tedious it was very monotonous it was very boring and you know you were not getting much you know feedback about it so in all the time i did it he laughed okay and only two butterflies i had tagged were recaptured so when he used to tag the butterflies out of all those thousand butterflies only two butterflies you know were recaptured that they got it back again and they were not more than 75 miles from where i lived only two butterflies we got back and that two only within the range of 75 miles okay so he was very you know he laughed about it and then in the 7th grade he got a hint of what real science is when he entered a county science fair so when he was in second grade he started doing all of that but now when he got into 7th grade he got a real idea about it what actual science is when he went into a real science fair and he just got lost over there when he saw different things and different experiments over there it was really a sad feeling to sit there and not get anything 
while everybody else had won something. So it was a very sad feeling for Richard E. Bright. He was a very curious and a very bright child who wanted to, you know, learn about new things. But it was a very sad feeling for him that, you know, there were so many people who won different uh, things for, you know, different theories that they have made, different experiments that they did. It was a very, you know, saddening thing for him that, you know, he was not able to get any such thing. Any award was, no award was given to Richard E. Bright. His entry was slides of frog tissues which he showed under a microscope. So what did he do in that county science fair? He, uh, you know, he presented slides of frog tissues which, you know, people were able to see under that uh, microscope that he was, uh, you know, so he, this is how he entered into that county science fair. He realized the winners had tried to do real experiments and not simply make a, you know, a neat display. So what did he do? He felt that he just did a normal display of frog tissues and the people who won, they were doing real experiments about science. Okay. So already the competitive spirit that drives Richard E. Bright was appearing now that he also wanted to do something new and real. I knew that for the next year's fair, I would have to do a real experiment. I cannot, I cannot just show frog tissues under a mic microscope next year. I was sure that now, if I want to be here next year, I have to do some real experiment, okay? So yes, the subject I knew most about was the insect work I had been doing in the past several years. When he was in second grade, he used to collect the butterflies, right? So that was some real work that he used to do. So he wrote to Dr. Urguhat for ideas and back came a stack of suggestions for experiments. So he wrote a letter to the doctor and a lot of suggestions from his side, they came to Richard E. Bright that, you know, these are the experiments that you can perform with the insects or you can say with the butterflies, okay? So those kept E. Bright busy all through high school and led to prize projects in county and international science fairs. So yes, he was performing different experiments and now this time, yes, he was able to win in the county and uh, in the not only national but international science fairs. He was performing different experiments which, you know, uh, Dr. Urguhat has suggested to Richard E. Bright. He was performing those ex experiments and it kept him busy through his high school and he was able to win, okay? So, what's the prize you know, they they have, we chalte So, now for his 8th grade project, E. Bright tried to find the cause of a viral disease that kills nearly all monarch caterpillars every few years. So, now what happened students? So, now when he was in 8th grade, okay, when he was in 2nd, when he was in 2nd class, mein de, what he used to do? He used to collect butterflies, he started tagging them, okay, but then when he got into 7th grade, what did he do in 7th grade? In 7th grade, he wanted to do something great and this is how he entered the science fair. Now, when he was in 8th class, okay, Richard E. Bright, he tried to find the cause of a viral disease, ki jo butterflies hai. ये जो मनार्क बटरफ्लाइज हैं ये हर कुछ साल में इनकी डेथ क्यों हो जाती है? Why do these butterflies they die? Okay, why these monarch butterflies die? Okay, in every few years. So what is the cause of a viral disease which is there in their body? So he wanted to know about that. What did he do? He was trying to find the cause of a viral disease that kills all these monarch butterflies in every few years. And at that time he was just in 8th grade when he wanted to know the reason behind viral disease, cause of the viral disease that kills these butterflies every year. Okay. So, E. Bright thought the disease might be carried by a beetle. Maybe a beetle is the reason who, you know, brings uh, that disease or this viral disease into these uh, monarch butterflies. So, he tried raising caterpillars in the presence of beetles. So, now he from eggs to caterpillars, right? So, he kept all the caterpillars with the beetles, okay? 
and I didn't get any real results. So he was kind of now sure that beetles, maybe they are not the reason that, you know, why they get this viral disease and this, you know, and they die because of it. But I went ahead and showed that I tried the experiment and this time I won. So he was not sure that it was happening because of beetle, but he was sure that there is a disease because of that disease, these uh, butterflies, you know, they die every time. So he showed that experiment and this time he won uh, the county science fair, okay. And the next year his science fair project was testing the theory that why, that you know, how viceroy butterflies, how do they copy monarchs? Viceroy butterflies, they are one species of butterfly and how do they copy these monarch butterflies? So that was the topic which they were, which they wanted to test. So the theory was that viceroys, they look like monarchs because monarchs don't taste good to birds, okay. So now what was the theory that both these butterflies, they look similar. So viceroy butterflies and monarch butterflies. So they are similar when it comes to looks, okay, when it comes to physical looks. So, they kind of look similar, okay. Why do they look similar? The reason is that because monarchs, they don't taste good to the birds. They both look similar. Birds, they only want to eat viceroy butterflies because monarch, uh, they don't, monarch butterflies, they don't taste good to the birds. So, it's a big no-no for birds, okay. But they kind of look similar. Theory was that viceroys look like monarchs. So they look similar, okay. So maybe it can be the reason that viceroy butterflies, they want to copy monarchs. So the birds will get confused because we look similar. And if we'll behave in the same way, the birds wouldn't be able to distinguish between that we are viceroy butterflies or we are monarch butterflies and they will get confused and we can save ourselves, okay. And maybe they will eat monarch butterflies or maybe they will leave us because they don't want to eat monarch because they are not good in taste for the birds, okay. So now yes, let's move to the next. So viceroys on the other hand do taste good to birds. Now viceroy butterflies were good in taste according to the birds. So yes, they wanted to eat viceroy butterflies as I just explained. So the more they look like monarchs, the less likely they are to become a bird's dinner. If you will be able to copy a monarch butterfly in, a, in the exact way, they won't be eaten, okay. E. Bright's project was to see whether in fact birds would eat monarchs or not. So the project was they wanted to test that birds, do they eat monarch butterflies? He found that a starling would not eat ordinary bird food, okay. And it would eat all the monarchs it would get. Ebright said later research by other people showed that viceroys probably do copy the monarch. So yes, research says that yes, probably they copy the monarch. Viceroys they do that. Okay. So yes, you can see in the picture, these are monarch butterflies and this is a viceroy butterfly. And they almost look this similar. They're designing everything. You can see the, you know, shape of the wings and the little dots that they have at the border, it's almost same, but not exactly the same. So this project was placed first in the zoology division. It was the first project and it was third in the overall county science fair. So it was third in the overall position, but it was the first project that was placed in the zoology division, okay. So in the second year in high school, when he was in college in second year, Richard E. Bright began the research that led to his discovery of an unknown insect hormone, okay. And indirectly, it also led to his new theory on the life of cells. So when he was in second grade in college, you know, he started researching and which led to a discovery of, you know, an, uh, you know, unknown insects hormones, okay. And then it, you know, he moved to the new theory that how basically, you know, uh, cells they work and what is the life of cells. So the question he tried to answer was very simple. What is the purpose of 12 
tiny gold spots on a monarch. So you must have seen, uh, you know, a butterfly. And let's say if this is the, I'm not able to draw it very nicely. But you know, uh, the butterflies, they have small, uh, you know, spots on their wings. So that was the question that why do they have these 12 tiny gold spots on the body of a monarch? So everyone assumed the spots were just ornamental, they were like just there. But E. Bright, e. Bright said that everyone assumed that the spots were just there. But Dr. Urgu Hat didn't believe it. To find the answer, E. Bright and another excellent science student, first they had to build a device that showed these spots were producing a hormone which was necessary for the butterflies full development. So Richard E. Bright said that everybody thought that you know it is just there to make them look beautiful and colorful but Richard E. Bright and another science student who was very brilliant they both proved it that these small golden spots on the body of a monarch they produce a hormone and that hormone was that hormone was doing what? It was helping in the butterfly's overall full development, okay? This project won E. Bright first place in the county science fair and uh, what that to international level and entry into the international science and engineering fair. So earlier he used to participate only in the county science fair but because now he won the first place, he could enter into the international science and engineering fair where different you know and big scientists they used to come brilliant students used to come so then he won third place for zoology and he also got a chance to work during the summer at the entomology lab of the walter reed army institute of research which again which is again a very big place so when he entered into that international science fair he again won third place for zoology because he was uh, working on animals and insects so when he was at high school richard e bright continued his advanced experiments on the monarch pupa okay so remember the sequence first they are eggs then caterpillar then pupa and then into an adult butterfly so he used to keep working on, he used to work on monarch pupa. That year his project won first place at the international science fair and gave him another chance to work in the army lab during the summer. So first time he got the entry, he got third position and because of that he got the entry into that army lab, uh, Walter Reed Army Institute of Research. Then when he used to keep experimenting, Next year his project won first place at the International Science Fair and he again got a chance to work in that institute during his summer. Now during his, you know, when he was in his senior year, final year, he went a step further. He was in college, final year now. He grew cells from a monarch's wing, okay. So what did he do? He grew cells from a monarch's wing. You must have seen the wings of a butterfly. So he grew cells from it, wing in a culture and showed that cells would divide and develop into normal butterfly wing scales only if they were fed the hormone from the gold spots. So what did he do? He did an experiment where he proved that he, what did he do? He grew cells. First he grew cells from a monarch's wings. He took it out. Okay. And then he showed that the cells would divide. So he said if the hormone is provided, which hormone which was produced from the golden spots, gold spots of a monarch. So if those, if that hormone is given to these cells, it will directly develop into a normal butterfly's wings, scales only if they were fed the hormone. If you will give the hormone, these cells will develop into a normal butterfly's wings that too automatically. So this was the experiment on which he was working. Now this project won first place for zoology at international fair because he kind of proved it 
and he spent the summer after his graduation you know again at the army lab and at the lab, lab of us department of agriculture so he was just getting better and better and better every day because he was such a curious person who was just willing to work now the following summer after his freshman year at harvard university now he got himself into harvard university which is such a big thing ebright went back to the lab of the department of agriculture he did some more work and he again worked on you know the hormone that monarch butterfly was getting from the gold spots so as i told you bachcho 12 wo golden spots the to usse jo hormone develop ho raha tha us pe wapas se richard ebright ne kaam karna start kar diya okay and using the labs sophisticated instruments he was able to identify the hormones chemical structure also of course lab mein bahut acche acche instruments hote hain to unhone unka bilkul sahi fayda uthate hue उससे ये भी पता लगा लिया कि जो ये हार्मोन बाहर आ रहा है हार्मोन जो रिलीज हो रहा है इस हार्मोन का केमिकल स्ट्रक्चर क्या है व्हाट इज द केमिकल स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द हार्मोन ओके सो अ ईयर एंड अ हाफ लेटर ड्यूरिंग हिज जूनियर ईयर ई ब्राइट गॉट द आइडिया फॉर हिज न्यू थ्योरी नाउ ही गॉट अ न्यू आइडिया ओके अबाउट सेल लाइफ एंड इट केम वाइल ही वॉज लुकिंग एट X-ray photos of the chemical structure of a hormone. So when he was looking at the X-ray of that chemical structure, okay, of that hormone, okay, so he got the idea of how do these cells they work. So when he saw those photos, Ebray didn't shout, "Eureka!" or even, "I have got it." But he believed that along with his findings about insect hormones, the photos it gave him more idea. They gave him the idea about it gave him answer to the one of the biology's puzzles that how the cell can read the blueprint of its dna so this chapter is less about literature it's more about a science thing okay so yes you have to study it according to that so that so then you'll be able to answer the questions very easily so uh, yes he knew that i got it and what did he do he was aware that i have got the answer to the question and how the cell can read the blueprint of its own dna of its dna so that was the question and he knew that i have got the answer to this okay so now dna is the substance in the nucleus of a cell that controls heredity we can also call it kind of genes okay it's a very hereditary thing okay it is something that you have got genetical okay so it determines form and function of the cell so thus dna it is the blueprint for life okay it's a very important thing and e bright and his college roommate whose name was james r wong you know they worked all that night they drew different pictures they constructed plastic models of molecules just to show how it could happen and together they both wrote the paper that explained the whole theory of the uh, cells okay and surprising no one who knew him richard e bright graduated from harvard with highest honors that means you can say highest pointers okay and in his class and his score was 1510 so that was the highest pointers in his class and e bright went on to become a graduate student researcher at harvard medical school and he began doing experiments to test his theory okay so yes uh, 1510 that was his score which was highest in his entire class and this is how he graduated you know as a student researcher at harvard medical school he became a graduate student researcher okay now let's move ahead if the theory proves correct it will be a big step towards understanding if his theory was proven correct it will be a big step in understanding the processes of life and how does you know how do our cells work how life processes and it might also lead to new ideas for preventing even some types of cancer which is even you know still which is such a big thing and if his you know theory works properly you know uh, the world would get some you know prevention to some types of cancer and other diseases 
So, all this is possible because Ebright's, because of his, you know, scientific curiosity towards every new thing. In his high school, his high school research into the purpose of the spots on a monarch pupa eventually led to him to his theory about cell life, which was a very important thing. But it began with the this. It began with this that uh, you know the golden spots that we have on monarch pupa that they do produce a hormone. So it started with that, but it eventually led him to the theory about cell life. So Richard E. Bright, he has been interested in science since since he first began collecting butterflies, but not so deeply that he hasn't time for other interests. But ऐसा नहीं था कि उनको सिर्फ uh, you know, science में ही interest था, वो सिर्फ scientific चीजें ही करना पसंद करते थे, ऐसा नहीं था, उनका interest और भी चीजों में था. He was also a champion debater, that means वो बहुत अच्छे थे बच्चों, debate करने में. You know what is a debate where a topic is given and एक जना for में बोलता है, एक जना against में बोलता है. So, he was not only a brilliant scientist, but he was a champion debater. वो एक बहुत ही अच्छे पब्लिक स्पीकर थे एक बहुत ही अच्छे कैनोइस थे कैनोइस क्या होता है कैनोइंग होता है एक तरह से बोट चलाना एक पतली सी बोट रहती है आई विल ट्राई टू ड्रॉ इट फॉर यू बट नॉट सो श्योर ऐसे पतली सी बोट रहती है बच्चों और इसमें ज़्यादातर ऐसा होता है कि एक जना बैठ पाता है या मैगजिम बोल सकते हैं कि दो जने बैठ सकते हैं दैट्स इट सो दैट इज़ अ बोट एंड द नेम इज कैनो बोलते हैं उसको कैनोइंग उसको चलाने को बोलते हैं प्रोसेस को सो कैनोइस्ट इज अ पर्सन जो इस बोट को चलाता है पतली सी बोट को ओके सो ही वाज अ डिबेटर अ पब्लिक स्पीकर अ गुड कैनोइस्ट एंड ही वाज अ वेरी यू नो आउटडोर पर्सन ही वाज वेरी इंटरेस्टेड इन आउटडोर थिंग्स नॉट इनडोर थिंग्स ओके he was he is also an expert photographer he was even a very good photographer he was not only a brilliant scientist but a brilliant photographer and he wanted to particularly click nature and scientific exhibits okay so he wanted to uh, re click pictures related to uh, you know science or scientific things and he even loved click clicking pictures related to nature okay so richard e bright was not only a brilliant scientist he was a very good debater a good canoeist an outdoor person he was a great public speaker and he was also interested in photography okay so apart from being such a great scientist he was so good in other things also so in high school richard e bright was a straight a student he always used to get a because learning was easy and he turned a lot of his energy towards debating and model united nation club so whenever he used to get free time he used to engage himself in debating competitions okay he also found someone to admire that was richard a wearer his social studies teacher and advisor to both clubs okay so you know he used to get his inspiration from his teacher richard ओके हिज सोशल स्टडीज टीचर शी यूज टू टीच सोशल स्टडीज एंड वो दोनों क्लब्स में एडवाइस दी थी जहाँ वो डिबेट करते थे और जहाँ पढ़ाई करते थे ओके एंड शी वॉज द परफेक्ट पर्सन फॉर मी देन ही ओपन ही ओके इट वॉज मेल टीचर ही ओपन माई माइंड टू न्यू आइडियाज सो रिचर्ड ई ब्राइट सेट कि मेरे टीचर ने मुझे इतना मोटिवेट किया कि मुझे अलग अलग आइडियाज के लिए मेरा माइंड ओपन हो गया रिचर्ड वुड ऑलवेज गिव दैट एक्स्ट्रा एफर्ट ओके उनके टीचर ने क्या बोला कि रिचर्ड हमेशा एक एक्स्ट्रा एफर्ट डालते हैं चीजों को सीखने में एंड इट यूज टू प्लीज हिज टीचर ओके सो ही सेट वॉट प्लीज मी वॉज हेयर वॉज दिस पर्सन हु वुड पुट इन थ्री और फोर आवर्स एट नाइट डूइंग डिबेट रिसर्च डिबेट रिसर्च हु वुड यू नो एट नाइट हु वुड यू नो रिसर्च अबाउट इट फॉर थ्री फोर आवर्स बट रिचर्ड ई ब्राइट वॉज समन हु वुड डू दैट Besides doing all his research with butterflies and his other scientific things, even used to prepare for debates like you know he has to give his best. Okay, so Richard was very competitive. His teacher said, but not in a bad sense. You know he explained Richard wasn't interested in winning for winning sake. वो सिर्फ जीतने के लिए काम को नहीं करते थे. वो किसी लिए काम को करते थे. Winning to get a prize. Okay. He was winning because he wanted to do the best he could, and for these right reasons, he wants to be the best. कोई इंसान चाहता है कि मैं इस कंपटीशन में पार्टिसिपेट कर रहा हूँ तो मैं जीत जाऊँ. Richard E. Bright का सोच ऐसी बिल्कुल नहीं थी कि मुझे सिर्फ 
जीतने के लिए जीतना है आई डोंट वॉन्ट टू विन जस्ट फॉर द सेक ऑफ विनिंग आई वॉन्ट टू विन बिकॉज येस आई विल वर्क हार्ड फॉर इट एंड आई जस्ट वॉन्ट टू गिव माई बेस्ट मुझे अपना बेस्ट देना है एंड अल्टीमेटली जब आप अपना बेस्ट देते हैं तो कहीं ना कहीं सक्सेस आपके पास अपने आप आती है बच्चों सो सिमिलरली येस यू शुड ऑल्सो लर्न समथिंग फ्रॉम हिम एंड येस दैट वुड बी रियली नाइस सो दैट इज वन ऑफ द इंग्रीडियंट्स इन द मेकिंग ऑफ अ साइंटिस्ट स्टार्ट विद अ फर्स्ट रेट माइंड then you need to add curiosity okay so this is at the end we are telling you how to become a great scientist you have to start with a first rate mind then you have to add curiosity jigyasa and mix in the will to win for the right reasons aapko ichha paida karni hai jeetne ki par har sahi tarike se jeetna hai aur har sahi tarike ke liye jeetna hai hame okay so e bright he had all these qualities and from the time the book the travels of monarch x it the book just opened the world of science to him and richard he bright he never lost his scientific curiosity then he was just you know doing more and more and more so what a lovely and an inspiring chapter so i know students it was more about science okay but what you have to remember is richard e bright was a very curious and you know he had a very bright mind okay uh, he was just raised by, raised by his uh, single uh, parent his mother so she always used to inspire him she brought him a new book and the name of the book was the travels of monarch x and after that he never turned back he always you know wanted to do something or the new or something or the other thing he started with collecting butterflies and putting tag on it then he entered the you know uh, county science fair in 7th grade then in 8th he won a prize in that okay and this is how he never you know he never looked back he just kept on doing the right work for the right reasons he started with you know um, learning about the hormone which was produced from the golden spots of uh, the monarch pupa but then uh, it gradually moved towards the uh, other experiment other research that was how do cells work and it could even prevent you know some types of cancers and diseases so richard e bright's work is a very fantastic thing and a very inspiring person so this was all about today's uh, chapter so i hope you enjoyed and you were able to understand the whole chapter so yes students if you enjoyed and if you even have any doubt you can let us know in the comment section thank you so much for watching the entire video and i will see all the dear students in the next lecture where we'll complete one more topic in just one go so thank you everyone i'll see you in the next lecture till then everyone bye bye and keep learning